I think it's day six or seven. I don't know. It's a bit chilly now, but it's still sunny. I'm down to this crankcase block and gear speed gear gearbox block. I'm going to disassemble the engine in this position and lay out the screws like that. So this is the front of the engine, that's the bottom, top and back. This loads of screws, 10 mil it seems all across. There's some Allen screws here, maybe 5 mil. Some more 10 mils here. I'll probably have to remove this, uh, I think it's a magnetic strainer or something. Yeah. Here we go. After removing all this, taking out all the casing and stuff, I'll start sandblasting. I already did a test and it's working quite nice. Uh, the metal is like really nice and soft and ready for painting in the sand blasting areas. I messed up the window here because I'm dumb and I didn't put tape on. You should put tape on these things. On this rag I'll lay out the screws from top to the bottom. This is for my reference. The first screw is out to size. They're all marked 7. It says something in the manual about the screws marked 7 and the screws marked 4. It's something to do uh, with the torque value. They, this one came out really easy. So on the first row, this one is longer, the first one. The second one is this size. I'm guessing all of these are the same size because of the casing. Yeah, this is the third one. <laughs> so it's like middle. It's not like this, not like that. It's like middle size. Okay, in the manual it says crankcase remove upper crankcase bolts. Remove lower crankcase bolts. Okay. And then it says use 8mm mm bolt and not to separate the crankcase. Now I've seen there's something here that you can put a, a bolt in and a nut and then it's gonna push the crankcase apart. That's smart. And it says there's another one on the other side. So there should be another one on the other side. One thing that I've noticed... This is the join between the parts over here. There's no gasket on this, so I'm curious to see how they, like, or there's no pressure, there's no pressurized oil in there. I'm curious to see how they sealed it. Alright, the upper crankcase bolts are here. Forgot about these, one, two, and then, maybe there's some inside here. No. Oh yeah, one here. One here, four here. Okay, so I have to remove those separately. It, it also says to remove them in a diagonal pattern. Not sure how I'm gonna do that because uh, it sits on some blocks of wood. It is really convenient here, but there's a uh, the bolts are here. And I don't want to put it upside down because of these and this that I don't know how to take out. Probably to seal it I'll use this thing. Right, because Suzuki is strange. Now this is the fourth screw, one, two, three, four, and for some reason it's the same size as the second screw. Again, now the fifth screw doesn't match any of the other sizes. So that's the fourth. It's longer. That's the third. <laughs> it's a bit shorter. Obviously, it's a bit shorter than the first. 
So yeah, I'm gonna have to put him. I'm gonna have to clean him and mark him or something. So this is the fifth screw. Hey, finally the sixth screw is the same length as the fifth screw. There seems to be some kind of green residue on these bolts. It starts with the second one. The third has it. The fourth doesn't have it. Fifth and sixth have it. All of them have this green residue. Cleaning this with a wire brush. But when you were smoking cigarettes, what about that? That was a I'm gonna develop a code for all these. Uh, it's gonna be like B from bottom, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the number of the screw. No, 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 no. So B for bottom, and then one, two, three, four, because there's like four rows of screws. These two are aligned with these, these two, right? I'll do the same for the top, and then the number of the screws starting from here, so from the rotor to the other side. Yeah, and label them, and attach the label to them. There's a label. B1 slash 1 so bottom row 1 slash first screw note to self on the second row excuse me the third screw has a clip here that catches this uh, this wire uh, the signal generator wire uh, since I'm recording this is the first screw and that's the second. They seem to be not the same size. Again, the first one is uh, shorter. The third one, the one with the clip, is like really long. And the fourth one is the shortest one. I forget who it was. Okay, it's time for the signal generator to come out. For this you need a H6, 6 mil. Uh, Allen key and a 19 mil bolt. Now, in order to keep this correct, the orientation correct, so that's the engine. This is the top here, bottom, and this is the uh, fucking front of the engine. I'm going insane. Alright, so this 1 over T, 1.4 T mark, needs to go on the contact side that has the green stripe and black stripe wire. The other side has a black stripe with another black stripe wire. No, a brown, sorry. A brown with a black and white stripe. So brown is at the bottom, green is at the top. And it says Japan here on the front side, not on the back side. Uh, it's easier to identify because the wire is coming in here on the back side. So I'm going to take this out. And then this should have some kind of teeth. Oh yes it does. It has one catch here. So you can't put it wrong. This uh, channel here goes into that thing. That pin over there. Let's see. I'll grab something. Let's see if you can take this pin out. It appears that you can't. Which is a good thing. Perfect. And now to remove the signal generator, just take this, these two screws off, and it should come out. Another thing to note: uh, this is the third screw 
from the second row on the bottom. And I throw this. So it's screw number one, two, three here. This is mark ten as opposed to seven. More piston parts. One thing to note, uh, the third screw from row number from fucking yeah, from row number two has a clip to hold the signal generator wire and the second screw from row number five, which is this one, also had a clip to hold the signal generator wire and some other wires. Yeah, there are some wires there. Another thing to note, uh, row three, only the row three screws, all of them, have this copper washer. Only the row three, so this one. And bam, and bam. For some reason, none of the rest have the copper washer. Not sure if I need to buy copper washers to add, or that's how it is. On the third row, these two bolts in the middle marked seven. They're the longest ones I've seen so far. And of course they're not the same size. Huh? 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they're the same size. Another thing to note, all so roll three, all the exterior screws have the copper washer. The interior ones, they don't. Strange. Maybe it's the, just a greater force required or something? I don't know. Row 4 consists of just this one. So far. Another thing to point out, even though I think they're made from the same material, the number 4 screw on the row 3 is got this dark tone. might not matter, but if you scratch it, it goes to the silvery. Bang! In the meantime, I had a haircut. Thank you very much, Paulina, for providing the style in this clip. What I see, I'm very impressed with. She's it's time to take this care. thing off. There's three screws here. They're marked four. They should be less torqued. Torqued less. There they are. My guess is they're all the same. So this is like an oil strainer. I've just cleaned it with some uh, compressed air. These are the same. Same size, the screws. Inside this strainer, two more number four marked screws. Uh, these have a washer, all of them. And these ones don't. They're like this. And two, they're the same size. And then this thing should come off, and it does. Seems to have an O-ring here. Bank. Seems to be a thick one. It seems uh, as a good idea at the time to put the cap back and put leave these screws in here. So I don't have to lose it. And then put the strainer back. Like that. It does have an orientation, uh, an arrow that says front, that means it's to the front of the engine. Uh, 17 mil deep socket. <sighs> yep. It does have uh, two thingies here. See those elbow thingies that stop it? So that's the orientation. It's like, it's like a hollow shaft bolt with some holes like that. Uh, that's uh, Joe Rogan talking to Eric Weinstein, two sick people. This is going to go in the bag with the oil strainer, for reference. Alright, row number four, the only screw in this row. Row number four screw is really tiny. Right, on top there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more screws. I don't see any other. I'll keep the orientation the same, but 
the rows are going to be one, two, three. Yeah, so from the back of the engine now. This is how I'm going to number them. Before I bag these, here's a picture of them. So row one, screw number one, and number two. Same size, whoa, Suzuki, what happened? Now for the last screw, it's a 12 mil. This one here, last bolt. Of course, it's the last screw never comes out. Row number two, this big screw, the 12, the first one here. Then the second one, then row number three, same thing, a thin one. Same thickness as this one, same thickness and length as these. And bolt number two. And now row number four. A small screw. Note this has a copper washer. And the last bolt is the same. No copper washer though. It's a bit longer than this one. And that's the all, all the bolts. I'll try and separate this now. A little note, this 12 mil bolt had a copper washer. There's the screws in the exact same order. There was another bolt here. And then there's another bolt here. From the oil, oil um, lines. I'm just gonna put these bolts in the crankcase top bolt bag because it makes sense. Yeah, George W. Almost with the two washers, three washers. There is another screw. I think the last one that there's this um, this plate here, the main sprocket, and there's a 10 mil screw here. This metal thing is bent on top of the screw as a safety thing, so you have to unbend that and then take out the screw. I think I'm gonna do it with a flat head screwdriver there and just a, a little hammer. That's how the screw looks, it's a short one. Once you take it out, this thing falls. And I think now I'm ready to separate this. I'm going to put this in the crankcase top screw bolt. Screw bolt uh, back. Okay, so that's the hole where you put an 8mm bolt or a 10mm. Put a nut here and then tighten it. And this is gonna separate the engine from this side. And there's another hole here. Same thing bolt, nut and then it's going to separate it from this side let's see how this goes alright in my bag of in my random screw box I found this that has a 7 on it so my guess is this is from this bike somewhere so I'm just going to leave it here for the time being <laughs> right so I'm going to use these 12mm uh, uh, nuts they don't fit in here so I'm going to shave a bit from this side so and that side, animals, make them fit, and then get on it. Yeah. Yeah. I've searched good. in my whole okay, screw so bags everything, like and so I don't have so this is a, a nut that, that fits in here, like an 11 so mil. Like I don't. In terms of Whoa. Angle grinder. Bang. I gave it a haircut. There's what do you know? Screw number one is in. Uh, I need to shave another no nut. <laughs> okay, let's start doing this. So I'm tightening it. Hey, and it separates, man. This was no bullshit. For the other one. The other side. I'm not sure if it comes on camera, but there's like a splitting noise happening. It's like something is under pressure, leaking, or something's happening here. 
after uh, For some reason it job. separated on this Good. side. Gonna work, skinny bitch. But it doesn't separate on this side. Um. Okay, so it's not coming off. So I'm thinking I need to remove this uh, clutch disc assembly. 8mm socket. I'm gonna do them in a crisscross pattern to make the force equal. There was silence everywhere inside of what I've called the gated institutional See? Because two it's the springs. That's how the screw looks. I'm guessing they're all the same size. Soft dance it. Is that what it is? Soft step step. Each spring comes out. Here's the problem. There's a point after which it's the same on both sides. So there's five bolts with five springs, all the same size. And now this comes off. Not. Ta-da! That would be interesting. It's got a ball bearing there, like one of those elongated ones. The runs on top of this shaft here, so there's a shaft coming out. This shaft has on the inside. Hold on. This chat is brilliant, man. Between Eric Weinstein and Joe Rogan. So the shaft on the inside has got this uh, thread-looking thing. I'm guessing like a pump for oil. And on the outside, so on the cap side, is the short shaft. Right. Now this has a giant nut to remove this uh, this casing wheel. Got a giant nut here with the same safety uh, thingy. So this has a washer, and the washer is like bend here to keep the nut in place. The discs should come out and they do. I always wanted to check the discs in this bike. They don't seem to be that bad. They still have those striations. striations. That's the first one. And I'm guessing these discs are the same. Yes they are. And in between each sandwich of two discs there is something that looks like a cogwheel on the inside that catches on this inside part yeah that's the inside part and the clutch moves this part aha there's a number of one two three four five six discs in total each with one of these sandwich plates between them. When did you say on your program? What day? On a reference. Which one? Uh, these probably clutch discs, clutch. they have a, a writing on them, it says T7. It's one of those ones where I'll drive and this T7 is towards me. Like towards the outside. No, it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic all of them. But it's so right. It's like every now and then someone can get the T7, this one also. I'm curious if it, they're in the same uh, so tooth spot or whatever it's called. Now, the next one doesn't have the writing, so it doesn't matter. Hmm, this is strange. This bearing, this flat bearing here, the ball side is on the inside. This side is on the outside, so it's on the casing. It is going to live in the bag with clutch plates. An interesting thing to point out, these clutch plates, the salami plates between the clutch plates, uh, they're, on this side they're kind of sharpish, so the sharpish side was outside, and uh, like the mild side was inside. I don't know if it matters, but I just thought I would point this out. I'll need to put an end to the disassembling process because I need another one of these to sacrifice it to make it like as a wrench to hold the stator. So 
I'll have to weld something here or some shit. Or two things. So one here. And one down there or something. So I'll have to probably order one of these or speak to the cool guys that fix motorcycles here next to my house. Maybe. Bastard. Never do that. Maybe they have one of these extra from an old bike or something and then on the other side um, one second on the other side I need to remove this also because that has a clutch assembly for the starter and ah I do have a 22 space here for a wrench I'll try and remove this one today. Let's see. Yeah, I'll have to make a 22 mil wrench, bend, but like bend it so it fits in this to hold the rotor while I take this out. Otherwise, I don't think I can dismantle this engine. Hmm. Since we can't open the engine anymore, let's try some sandblasting. Here. And now, this has got to be the the weirdest method. Why this man? Why not a thing? The item in question.